So um, here's an interesting way, th way of thinking about drum technique, new drum technique video. Um, how can we be responsive to the movement of the stick? That's the thing that I'm going to be talking about today. So um, let's think for a minute. First off, I'm just going to say that um, with all of the stuff that I show you today, I want you to play with these ideas. Play um, is the way I define it whenever I'm talking about it in my videos. Um, I don't, I, talk, I use it in a very specific way when I say play. So I just want to really say this. Play for me means to um, not have a goal or something uh, like a specific outcome in mind. It's kind of like you're in a similar state to if you're a kid and you're going outside and you're playing with a stick or you're playing with a ball, you know, you're just, you're just messing around. So it can be, mind, play can be mindless, play can be kind of um, uneventful, play can be boring, it can be fun. Um, and you can, and you can, play can lead you places as well. That's the idea is that when you're playing with something, you can actually follow random little ideas, random little what ifs you might have. Oh, what if I do this differently? Or what if I try this? Hey, that's kind of cool. That feels weird. You know, that feels weird. So you're really activating all your senses. So um, we're going to play with some uh, ways in which our hands can be responsive to the movement of the stick. That's what today's video is going to be all about, is how can we be responsive to the movement of the stick? And in my theory, in, in terms of the way I've been teaching, I believe that this is the fastest and best way to get good at drumming. And it's most fun too. <laughs> it's really good. Um, so what we want to be thinking of when we're drumming is the stick speaking to us. The stick is like trying to tell us things. We're like stick whisperers. We're kind of, you know, trying to read the vibe of the stick. We're trying to sort of be one with the stick, move it. So the first prereq the first thing that we want to make sure we're doing is we want to make sure that all of the right parts of our hand are always touching the stick. For a matched grip, it's you've got the fulcrum part here, and then you've also got these fingertips touching the stick like this, the pads of your fingers. So we don't want to be wrapping around like that. That's not good. The, pat, the fingertips. So we want to be imagining it's like we're pressing a sort of big button or something. We're not grab. We're, there's no part of the hand that is grabbing the stick because it doesn't need to. If you're grabbing the stick like this, then it's like, no. It's a very unusual way of doing things. And these two fingers are holding it steady. So when I'm doing this, I'm thinking... The parts of my hand that are touching the stick are the finger, the, the pads of my fingers, and these parts here. And occasionally, whenever I grab this, stop the stick from moving, it'll be the palm of my hand as well, just at the base of the thumb, like that. I always like to think of it as like if you look down my hand like this, imagine like a, a, a wave, like a surfing wave. Somebody, imagine a surfer kind of like, you know, screaming through the middle, being like, yeah, sick one, dude. You want to see this kind of like your hands coming over like a tsunami. Um, if I'm grabbing it like this, no, 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 no. Yes. Yes. Good. So with the right hand, I'm just going to stay with the right hand. And we'll do the left hand afterwards. There are two types of um, bounces that we want to get really good at. Um, playing with. So you can play with these things. The first thing is dropping the stick on the drum, and letting it bounce multiple times, just letting it bounce out. And what that means in order to do that is that I am dropping my wrist, if you like, I'm just dropping my wrist down. I'm keeping all of those points of contact that I mentioned before, always touching the stick. But I'm letting my back fingers be really loose. So if I let my back fingers be really loose and just let my hand open, then the stick will bounce because that's just how physics works. I don't have to try it. There's no magic going on here. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm literally, I'm not making the, these other movements happen. So in case you think that I'm doing some weird thing where I'm trying to trick you, I'm not. Drop the stick and I'm letting it, all those 
other bounces of the stick are happening completely by its by themselves. And all I'm doing is picking, once the stick's finished bouncing, is I'm kind of picking it up, if you like, with my back fingers. They just kind of, they go, all right, stick, you finished bouncing. I'm just going to close over so I can pick you up again and then drop you again. So I'm getting lots of drops, lots of bounces with the stick. Now this is a great thing to start off doing and you can do this as long as you like. Have fun with this because there are some things that I really want you to notice when you're doing this. Things to pair with your mental ideas. First thing we want to think about is, or play with, is how does the way that you throw the stick down to the drum change the amount of pressure that you need to hold the stick with? So if I throw the stick down harder at the drum, that means I have to hold the stick tighter in my hand because otherwise the stick's going to fly out. If I drop the stick lighter, then it means I don't have to hold it in as much. It's a sort of, it makes sense if you think about it. It's like if I'm going to sort of um, push something over, then uh, I'm going to need to... <laughs> That's not a good analogy. <laughs> Let me think about that. I can't remember. I've got to work going with that. If I want to make, oh, far out. If I exert force on something, if I want to stop that force in its tracks, then I'm going to need to exert the same amount of force to stop it from moving. So if I throw the stick down hard, I've got to grab it hard. If I throw the stick down light, I don't need to grab it as hard. Now that works really well for us drummers because if I can grab, if I'm able to hold the stick really light, then what that does is it frees the stick to move. It allows the stick to move by itself. So if you're finding that you're not getting bounces, then what's probably happening is that you're not holding, either you're not holding the stick right in the sense of like having these contact points, maybe you have a part of your hand that's impinging the motion of the stick, or you're holding it too tight. And if you're holding it too tight, the first thing to link that with is throwing it down too hard. If you feel like you're unable to hold it loose, try and drop it really light and see what that does. Also notice when you drop it, notice the different speeds of bounces that you can get. So by if I drop the stick in different ways, I can get the stick to bounce at different speeds. I can get it to bounce slowly or quickly. To get it to buzz and buzzes are like ultra fast you know you can think of a buzz as like ridiculously quick bounces that's like <laughs> and notice as i go slower so the slower the slower bounces come up higher the faster bounces come down lower so the idea with this is just have a play with this play with all of the different ways that you can make the stick bounce be mindless you're just sitting down try different stuff try fast try buzzes once that's feeling good i want you to notice that weird feeling that you might be feeling in the backs of your fingers the pads of your fingers where the stick is actually moving your fingers because it's bouncing so uh think about the that weird sensation Rank it from zero, if you if I had to say from zero to 10, how weird does it feel when you drop the stick and let it bounce and your fingers follow the movement of the stick in the sense that the stick actually moves your fingers? How weird does that feel? Give it a ranking. Try it now and give it a ranking from zero to 10. Maybe for most people, I'll, when they start doing this, they'll say like a seven, you know, it feels really weird. Think about maintaining that weird feeling. Go right into that weird feeling. Maybe some for some people, it doesn't feel so weird. Some people, it's like a two or not even weird at all. Anyway, so what, once you get that weird feeling on your fingers and you can know that the stick is bouncing and moving your back fingers, you can experiment and play with thinking, what can these back three fingers do to affect the bounces of the stick? Have a play. They can be loose. They're really loose and the stick's going to bounce sort of slower like this. They're 
bit tight, they, they can come down a bit more and add more pressure to the stick. I like this one, but you can do a zipper effect where you do a buzz, but kind of scoop the stick up. I call it, like, I call that a zipper. It's like zip, zip, zip. And that's really fun. You can let the stick bounce a random number of times. Try to let it bounce like five times. And after it's finished bouncing, you wait for it. You know, you wait for the stick. Wait for it to bounce a number of times and then zipper it up with the back fingers. One, two, three, four, five. And notice when I do that, that my wrist is not doing anything. This is pure bounce, pure bounce. The stick, I'm trying to make the stick do everything by itself. You can try different numbers. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two. One. One might be like, you know, you drop the hand and you actually grab the stick at the same time. So you kind of zipper it. So notice that I'm a bit all over the place. I'm throwing lots of random ideas at you, but the idea, the takeaway with this is that you don't need to memorize individual ideas with this. You just want to be able to play with this stuff and see what you notice. But those are the key things to realize. The link between how hard you throw the stick down at the drum and how tight that then re uh, means you need to hold the stick. We want to think of those things as being linked. Sometimes if I'm playing a big molas riff, I'm just going to naturally need to put a bit more pressure in the grip because there's more pressure going through the stick. So we just had a look at ways in which um, essentially your hand can respond to the stick. So at the start of the video, I was talking about having the stick speaking to you. You know, the speak, stick's trying to tell you something and we want to be responsive to the stick. This is one way that we can respond to the stick because the stick's bouncing in our hands and we are completely aware of what the stick is doing because our fingers are always touching the stick in the right places and we can feel the movement of the stick at every point. If I, my fingers come off, it's like the signal's been cut. I've lost connection and I can't, I have no idea what the stick's doing and it's anyone's guess as to what I, it's like, uh, what the heck is the stick even doing? I'm, I've disconnected from it. But if I keep my fingers touching all the time, then I always know what the stick's doing and then, then I can start manipulating the movement of the stick. So I'm working, but I'm always working with it. And that's how we develop speed and accuracy. So that's one way that we can um, respond. I like to think of that as responding to the stick. The stick's bouncing and I am responding to it. What I think actually happens when you mess around with this stuff is I think there are really fast, like twitch muscle fibers that respond. Um, and those are the sorts of, uh, I guess, sort of things that we want to be training um, because they move far, those twitch sort of muscle responses move quicker than your brain can really think about it. It's kind of like when you sort of notice something falling off the side of the bench or something and you quick like a um, reflex. It's like a reflex. So it almost happens faster than you can really think about it. So if you trust your reflexes and train your reflexes, that's how you develop speed really quickly. Sorry, so a bit of a tangent there. But the second thing that I wanted to say, that's this whole thing that I just got you to do, bouncing the stick, that's one way that we can respond to the movement of the stick. The other way that we can respond to the movement of the stick is by dropping it. And thinking, again, listening to the bounce of the stick, how is it moving? We can respond with our wrist. So normally, um, in the other, in the other example, when we were dropping the stick, the stick's heavy enough and big enough to just move your back fingers on its own. So your stick is actually moving your fingers. It's not like, so if you just drop the stick and do nothing, things will happen. Your wrist is a lot heavier than your fingers and it's actually adding weight to the top of the stick. So if you just simply drop your wrist, not as much happens. You get a little bit of a bounce, but it's pretty dead. But 
That being said, if we add a little bit of a molar stroke, so we're going to put in a little bit more height, and more height means more velocity. So we we'll might need to, you might notice you need to grab the stick a little firmer, just a little bit. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and respond to the bounce of the stick with our wrist. I like to think of the wrist in this way as being like a shock absorber. Same with the bounces too. It's like suspension on a mountain bike or something, or a car where you land and it's absorbing the shock. Same way if you are jumping from a, like a tall height, high height, <laughs> and you are landing, if you land smack bang on your legs with your legs straight, then you're gonna break something. But if you move with the movement and roll out of your landing, then it's gonna be a lot smoother. So if I'm dropping the stick from a high height, I like to think of my wrist being really loose so that it can respond to the bounce of the stick. So this type of practice we can think of as wrist bounces. I like I call them wrist bounces. So I'm doing a nice big molar stroke. Molar stroke, fancier sort of term than it needs to be. Don't be intimidated by that word. I'm just bringing the stick up and dropping it. And it's like I'm throwing something. It's like I'm throwing a ball. Bring the stick up and just dropping it down. And notice how my wrist is kind of absorbing the shock of the stick and moving with it. So um, this will actually be my wrist doing a bit more of the movement. And my wrist is actually doing stuff <laughs> consciously because the stick isn't, as I was saying before, the stick isn't um, powerful enough to move my wrist completely on its own. But if we think about the wrist being respon responsive to the stick, to the bounces of the stick, that's how we can develop really quick wrist speed. So try some bounces and try and let your stick, your wrist bounce with the stick. And notice how you can move the two. Now the really cool thing about that is that my wrist can move independently of my fingers. So this is really nice in that the two, those two things, wrist bounces and free, we'll call them free bounces, the one I was getting you to do at the start they can be working in tandem with each other. They're both doing stuff at the same time. So my fingers and my wrist are always responding to the bounces of the stick. But the key takeaway from these is play with the free bounces, play with the wrist bounces, and play with it. <laughs> Just play with it and notice how both of the, all of these things can be responding to the movement of the stick. So then if you're going to play paradiddles, it's like you can develop much faster speed with the paradiddles because I'm not trying to, I'm not working as hard. I'm really letting the stick, I'm letting the stick do all the work and I'm responding to the movement of the stick. But it's, as I was talking about, there's twitch fibers. It's like a reflex. If you try and think too much about it, if you try and make your brain comprehend the speed at which all this is happening, it's not going to work. But if you keep, listen, listen to the stick. And by listen, I mean, you can listen with your ears, but I also mean listen through your hands. Listen through sensation and touch. And that's how you can develop speed really quickly. Quick thing on traditional grip, for those who play traditional grip. Same things can apply for the first one where you free bounces, drop the stick down, and let the stick kind of bounce your thumb and these fing top fingers. Now, in this instance, these fingers are sitting on top of the stick. When I'm playing with matched grip, there's no weight on top of the stick, so it allows it to bounce much freer. With traditional grip, there's weight on top of the stick with these fingers and the thumb. So you might notice that it doesn't bounce as freely as when you have a match grip. But what you need to do is think about it in the same way as the wrist stroke that we were doing earlier. We want these fingers on top to be very loose and to be responsive to the movement of the stick. Can you see there how I'm dropping the stick and I'm letting my thumb and the top fingers move with the bounces. They're responding. The 
they're always touching. So if these fingers here, top fingers here, are always touching the stick, again, more information. You're getting more information, and the more information you have, the faster you can respond. If you cut off that communication chain, then you're not going to be able to respond quickly, and your speed will suffer, and as a result, you'll be tense and tight. Three bounces this way. Again, try all the same thing with the play-based things. You know, play with all the different ways you can make the stick bounce. Make it bounce big. I'm doing a bit nice molar stroke here. Molar stroke, for this one, you can do a little bit of a curve, like a loop. Smaller bounces. And notice how you can stop the stick. You can stop the stick using the back these bottom fingers here. These bottom fingers come up to stop the stick. That's the uh, traditional grip equivalent of the free bounces that we were doing here. But what about the wrist ones, where the wrist is acting like a shock absorber? Well, uh, in traditional grip, a wrist movement is a rotating movement. It's not, it's different to um, a movement where your hand's facing down in match, uh, the hand that's playing matched grip. So what you can think of doing is um, absorbing the shock or responding to the movement of, of the stick with your wrist in traditional grip by following the bounce and rotating with the stick. So what I like doing here is keeping the hand relatively closed here, not leaving too much space but a little bit of space because we don't want to have it completely locked off with all of the fingers. We're leaving a little bit of space and just letting the stick bounce and then we're following the bounce a few times with the wrist. The nice one is to do a big molar stroke and that initial hit is going to have a lot of energy to it. So what you can do is you can notice how my hands closed but the stick's kind of up here because I've sort of followed the bounce of that initial hit. If I hit down off the smaller stroke and keep it down, you'll notice that it sends a lot more shock. That there's a shock that goes through your hand. Which sometimes you might want, you're gonna use the padding, a bit more padding part of your thumb there to make sure you don't hurt your the joint. But notice how when I hit down, I'm following the bounce of the stick up with my wrist. And then I'm just trying to sort of follow the rest of them with wrist strokes. So then that's how I can be responsive to the stick with my wrist and my fingers. hopefully helpful <laughs> hopefully that's helpful for you guys um enjoy